Okay, we're about to start. Hi everybody, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris, back to Skahari Part 2. In the first day we went and saw two different quarries and a cave. We got to look at these quarries, collect fossils, and after um, oh, working out in the rain all day long, we got to climb through a muddy cave. It was actually a lot of fun though. As you can see, the weather is still really bad. <laughs> it's uh, raining quite a bit. I'm hoping that it clears up. Ugh, doesn't sound that way right now. So I'm not going to stay out here very long. Uh, we're hoping that it clears up and we get better weather. So we get to take you into... Well, we're going to go there. Whether it's raining or not, as long as it's safe, we will be in the quarries. And we will bring you in as if we see any good finds. This is the second part of a two-parter, but you could start with this one. Of collecting fossils in Devonian rocks in the Skahari area. These are quarries that were allowed into by the quarry owners. You actually need permission to get in. Uh, as before, I'm going to ask you that if you like this one, or if you like part one, to go ahead and give us a like, you know, hit the like button, and even better, subscribe. Subscribing doesn't cost anything, but what this will do is let YouTube know that uh, these fossil collecting videos, or videos and fossils in general, uh, should come up in the feeds for people to look at. So basically making fossil collecting videos more popular. So if you like, please this, please subscribe, and I will bring you in to show you the fossils that we find on day two of Back to Skahari. Part two, the deluge continued. Okay, we're about to start in the first quarry for today. It's uh, in the Catskills, got my trusty four pounder, and gonna go out there and see if there are any good fossils. Our first stop today is in the Peckham Quarry. Peckham Quarry is located in Catskill, New York. Once again, it's one we're going to need special permission to get in by the landowners. It's not open to the public, but we're very privileged to be allowed to go in here today. This quarry is going to have many similar fossils. It's going to be a lot like the Skahari one with Beecraft, New Scotland, and Corkbird formations. Uh, the difference, though, is this one has a lot more uh, crystalline pockets. We might get very lucky and find some crystals in this particular quarry. This quarry is much longer in distance. It actually runs about five miles long. Uh, and within this quarry is pretty much riding the ridge of the Heldeberg fossil group, which is all a fairly well consolidated limestone and dolomites. Before we get started, we can see some of that. So let's. Uh...
for anyone out there. Don't wear pneumonias when you're uh, walking through any place like this. Camera, there it is. So here we have a little trailer bike. No, nah, it went past my leg. Okay, so you may remember Valerie from the fall when we were uh, collecting fossils up at Skahari. Well, now she has another good find. This is a cephalopod, a octopus-like creature that lived in a shell back in the Devonian. It's probably going to, we have, looks like about a foot of it here. There may have been a little bit more that's gone, but it is a really good find. It's what you like to see when you're searching for fossils over here. Uh, Valerie, thank you very much for showing this to us. You're welcome. Glad well, you should to do show it. Valerie, not just the oh. fossil. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so th thank you very much for showing this to us. You're welcome. On occasion. I do. You do. You definitely do. Hey, can I ask your first names? I'm John. I'm Ian. Ian and John and Ian have found a rock with a bunch of nice trilobites on it. We're giving them a bath. Oh, wow. See a lot more dark there. black parts there that could be more shell. Now we gotta get them out. Yes. <laughs> so good luck. Thank you. If you hit a, like I said, if you, if you can get that top layer that looks like it might yeah, pop off. Yeah, that's what we want. Then, uh, then you can probably get the wall. Okay. <laughs> can I have your first names? Hey, Chris. Hi, I'm Kat. Chris and Kat, and we have Bob. And Chris and Kat have found a giant cephalopod, and Bob is coming to the rescue, to rescue it from the rock. Yeah. Well, we'll see what we can do. So here's the giant cephalopod. Here's it's the, <laughs> here's the documentation of it, just in case. <laughs> and it might also help to restore it if it does come apart. Good luck. Gonna need it. All right, I'm gonna back up. Sawing is done. I hope they get this out of here before we have to go. Hey 
Nice. <laughs> very nice. Very glad you got that. It was kind of hard to see inside the quarry, so I wanted to show you what these things look like. This is one of those cephalopods. This is one that I found a couple of years ago. You can see this part that's filled in, or this part that is sticking out, is actually the internal cast. It would have been the uh, cast of the body of the cephalopod from the inside the shell. What you're seeing behind that is just sort of a void where the shell used to be. But you can tell that's the outside of the shell because of all the different segments. Little segments that you can see along here. Now this one is really quite big. I don't know how old a cephalopod would have had to be to grow this big and have this many segments, but it is quite impressive. Danger ahead. Don't know if we're gonna go that way. I'm assuming those two are far enough from the wall. Let's see, I'll zoom in. Yep, they're good and far away. going on here is occasionally we see these veins inside the rocks. When they get really big, they hold a lot of calcium. Sometimes it's calcite, or sometimes silica too, sometimes quartz, fills in the void, and enough time it may even grow really beautiful. The odds are a little bit against us. It's kind of late in the day and very rainy, but we will do the best we can. So, I didn't find one, but Katie, Katie, our editor, has found a nice little Herkimer quartz crystal. Very nice. This hole over here is what we call a bug. The place there, there's a lot of calcite crystals. In this case, calcite could be any kind of crystal. Uh, growing inside one of the fissures or cracks inside this rock. Basically the calcite would dissolve through the rock, form up in the void, and crystals over time would form. This one here looks like it's been pretty well cleaned out. This one looks like it's been pretty well cleaned out, not too much up there, but this is kind of the thing that we're looking for. I'm going to show you some of the fossils that we found at this Kahari Quarry. Before I do, I'd like to just take a look at some of these crystals. This was that one spot where there was a bunch of crystals. Managed to grab a bunch at that bug that was pretty well cleaned out, but there was still some good stuff. So a lot of calcite, a little bit of quartz. Actually, that might be calcite too. A little bit of quartz as well. Something that we call dog tooth calcite. This needs to be cleaned, but it's uh, basically little blades of calcite. So some nice quartz crystals there, as well as fossils. So I'll take you to see the fossils now. I'm oh, gonna go show you the fossils I found. I'm hearing a noise in the back. I stopped the filming because there's something in the woods. Something is in the back of my property over here. Might be a woodchuck, or might even be a deer.
Ooh, careful, careful. <sighs> Hello, welcome back. Well, we had a great trip up there, our return to Skahari. Now, as you saw, it was raining quite a bit, but that didn't stop us fossil collectors. Uh, I was leading the group, so I had more, I did more going back and forth and coordinating people, so I didn't find a whole lot uh, of fossils for myself, but um, did have a lot of fun. We like to, I did pick up a couple of things though, and I'd like to show you what they are. First is a Macroplora, and the Macroplora is a brachiopod that's just unusual because of its size. It's kind of like the giant clam of the Paleozoic. Just a very about three or four times the size of a normal brachiopod. Here's that large macroplora I found. Here's one that's free of the matrix so you can get a better look at what they look like. Macro meaning large and it was just a very large brachiopod. Plura refers to a part of the brachiopod, kind of the ends of them. And speaking of clams, I did find something from the bivalve family. This is a nice bivalve. Bivalves, they're very common nowadays, but back in the Paleozoic, brachiopods were much more common. So seeing a nice big and well articulated uh, bivalve, decided to pick that up. Now these things are all gonna, they need to be cleaned and prepped. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what we found. Here's what Katie found. Our Ka our Katie found that nice little Hindia. Hindi is a sponge, this is another little example. They usually don't fossilize very well, which is why um, we, in the New Scotland formation, one of those several formations up there, we're very happy to find them. Here is another one of those Hindia sponges. This one's a little bit bigger, also found in that quarry on the same day. Actually, you can actually see it's quite a bit bigger but same type of fossil here. One of these prehistoric sponges. And also found a couple of nice gastropods. So here we, once again, this is unprepped. I'm gonna probably dig around here, clean it up a bit, maybe try and carve the gastropod out a bit so it's more visible. Probably cut down the rock too. So this is in its unprepped state, but there is a nice gastropod right here. This you might want to zoom in on. This is a nice classic example of something called tenticulites. Can you see the tiny little creatures in there? Can you see these little things in here? These things that look like pencil points? Well, these we believe are actually tiny little squid. At the very beginning of the Devonian, or some people say the end of the Silurian, it's not clear exactly when this rock is from, it's kind of right at the boundary. And it's also not very clear what they are. Most paleontologists think they are something in the cephalopod or the squid type family. But there's a time when they just seem to be abundant. There are hundreds of miles of these little squid in enormous numbers uh, found all throughout New York State. And um, so there was some explosion going on of these little squid things right after uh, probably a mass extinction event at the beginning of the Devonian. Here I just have a nice little, it's going to be hard to see, but part of a trilobite and a nice cross section of a bivalve, so I decided to pick that up. This rock has a trilobite in it. It looks like it's a, probably a Dalmites. Dalmites is a trilobite that was prevalent in both the Silurian and mm -hmm. also in the Devonian. So the, this rock is Devonian. I think that particular one is probably from the Beecraft formation. Hard to say for sure when you're in a quarry and the rocks have been jumbled around a bit. But I think this one is Beecraft and also the one next to it is as well, which also has part of a Dalmites, part of that uh, trilobite in it. With this one, it looks like there is more trilobite material in this rock. So it's another one where I'm going to carve it up and uh, try and see if I can find uh, a bit more. And finally, the last rock there has a couple of nice examples of bivalves, not too rare or or really great condition, but decide to take those home as well. So, these are my finds. If, I, if anything preps out really nice, I'll put that in the video as well. Other than that, this is pretty much what we got up at Skahari. Now, I mentioned that I was up there and working with a lot of people, so I didn't get to do a lot of personal collecting, but I'm actually gonna be going back there, not with a group, but one of the quarry owners invited me to take a look at the first site, which had a uh, a lot of potential so we're going to go back and take a look at that and hopefully i'll be able to show you a little bit of that as well thank you so much for watching my video 
if you like it, please go ahead and hit that little subscribe button down there. That doesn't cost anything, but what that does is it makes videos of fossil hunting and collecting pop up more on people's screens, and hopefully this way people will get to see these type of videos if you happen to like this type of uh, Paleozoic treasure hunting. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot about the Lingula. You might remember I found that on day one. I was very excited about it. Well, the reason why I'm excited about this inarticulate brachiopod is because this is one that was important for Science Olympiad. I'm one of the people who makes the fossil test for Science Olympiad, and we never had a really good example of this fairly rare inarticulate brachiopod, but it's normally on the test, and the test is with usually with real fossils. So now we have a real lingula to test our Science Olympiad students. So Science Olympiad students, be forewarned, this could be on your test. Well, thanks again for watching Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. I hope you joined our adventures in Skahari, even though they were quite wet. We did find some really good fossils. Thank you, and hope to see you at the next one.